uh, like I'm gonna bypass the music if you just give me a heads up when we're live and started. Okay. I'll, I'll just get us started right yep. away. I'm printing start right now. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight for the Board of Supervisors District 3 meet and greet. Uh, my name is Timmy Liu and I use he, him pronouns. I am the executive director of AAPI's Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders for Civic Empowerment. And we are a statewide organization of grassroots organizations across the state trying to increase the participa participation of uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. And so thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I wanna just give a quick note that we are providing uh, simultaneous Cantonese, Mandarin and Vietnamese interpretation for this meet and greet. So um, if you haven't already, um, please uh, you join the language channel as appropriate on the lower uh, part of your screen, you'll see a button that says interpretation. And um, again, uh, my name is uh, Timmy and uh, I have the privilege of uh, moderating tonight's meet and greet. Um, in addition to being the executive director of AAPI uh, Force, uh, I'm an East Oakland resident um, and uh, yeah, just really excited and thrilled to have all four uh, candidates uh, participating tonight. And uh, I'll, I wanna just start this off by um, um, first just acknowledging the sort of um, extraordinary and unfortunate sort of moment that kind of brought us into this place, like yeah. the passing oh. of um, the late supervisor Wilma Chan, um, who I, I hope through tonight's panel um, that uh, the candidates can really channel uh, her commitment for uh, long-term social change and democratic participation. Um, and I uh, just wanted to just note that. Okay. Uh, tonight's event will be recorded in these multiple languages and will also be posted on our social media accounts uh, by the end of the week. Um, this is a nonpartisan candidates forum for the Alameda County Board of Supervisors race in District 3. Uh, this district includes Chinatown, San Antonio, Fruitvale, Melrose, Alameda, and unincorporated communities of San Lorenzo and Hayward, and a portion of the unincorpor unincorporated community of Ashland. In a moment, uh, the candidates will have a chance to introduce themselves and answer a few prepared questions. Uh, we will also have time for audience questions as well, so you can go ahead and submit them through the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, that's the icon with the two square oh, yeah. word bubbles <laughs> overlapping. And our host committee will help select the questions to be asked. Candidates will wrap up with their closing statements and we'll leave with the information we'll need to make informed choices on June the 7th. The candidates will each have a predetermined amount of time to respond and we'll be showing the timer on the screen. Uh, please be mindful of the time. We will remind you when you go over and may mute you if you do not wrap up. And lastly, for the viewers, uh, because we will have a timer on the screen, if you'd like to make sure you have a good view of the candidate or speaker, uh, make sure that you're in the speaker view and that you can toggle your screen to the left so that the candidate video is more prominent than the shared screen. There are two small gray bars, so you can click and hold down to do so. All right. Um, uh, we're just about to dive in and meet the candidates, but before that, I want to introduce our, introduce our host committee, the Oakland Chinatown Coalition, Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce and Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. Uh, so I request that um, we have, we'll have Ken and Vu also make an announcement related to the, um, the interpretation. I got all day and um, so, uh, 
如果你加入咗我哋今日嘅誒會議入邊，誒、呃、請大家可以喺語言翻譯嗰度去選擇廣東話。我哋今日會有語誒、呃、廣東話同國語嘅語言翻譯，然後你就可以撳去廣東話個去聽廣東話嘅翻譯。啊、呃，大家好，今天我們的會議呢會有國語的普通話的翻譯，請大家誒、呃、在地球那邊誒、呃、按一按，然後就會看到普通話的選擇。然后你就会听到国语的翻译了，嗯、um, ，希望可以帮到大家。好，谢谢。I'll pass it to the other person. Ah,、uh, I think that's、uh, also to vote make the announcement. Sorry about that, Timmy. Ah,、uh, Andy, xin vui lòng viết câu hỏi trên chat box. Cảm ơn. Do you want me to、uh, explain how to use in、uh, the Zoom for the people to know? Ah,、uh, yes. Could you please? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Ah,、uh, chúng tôi tên tôi là Tiffany và tôi là người thông dịch viên của、uh, trong cái cuộc họp trực tuyến ngày hôm nay. Và nếu hãy nhấp chuột vào nút interpretation thông dịch ở phía dưới màn hình Zoom góc bên phải. quý vị sẽ thấy một biểu tượng hình quả địa cầu và chọn、uh, Vietnamese tiếng Việt một lần nữa để nghe thông dịch bằng tiếng Việt xin hãy chọn Vietnamese nếu quý vị tham gia cuộc họp thông qua ứng dụng Zoom dành cho điện thoại sáng suốt xin hãy chọn ngôn ngữ của quý vị bằng cách chạm vào mua hoặc ba chấm ở dưới màn hình góc bên phải chọn language interpretation thông dịch sang ngôn ngữ khác rồi chọn Vietnamese tiếng Việt và chạm vào đơn nếu quý vị chỉ muốn nghe thông dịch viên thôi và không muốn nghe tiếng của người phát biểu xin hãy nhớ nhấp chuột vào mute original audio tức là tắt âm thanh gốc tất cả mọi người đều cần phải chọn một ngôn ngữ đừng ở chế độ off mà Zoom đã chọn sẵn cho quý vị cảm ơn quý vị rất nhiều、uh, back to you Timothy thank you okay thank you and all um uh since I had Skipped over some sections before we made the interpretation announcements. I'll just review again that、uh, this is a nonpartisan candidates forum for the Alameda County Board of Supervisors race in District Three.、Um, in this moment, the candidates will have a chance to introduce themselves and answer a few prepared questions.、Um, you can submit the questions through the Q and A function at the bottom of your screen.、Um, each of the candidates will have a Predetermined amount of time to announce、uh, to respond to the questions. So please be mindful of that time. And to the candidates,、um, if you go over the time, we will mute. We will mute you、um, if you do not wrap up、uh, to make sure that all our candidates have an opportunity to speak.、Um, and all right, so I'm going to move us into introducing our host committee, which includes、uh, Oakland Chinatown Coalition. Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce and Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. And so the first is,、um, I believe,、uh, Mike, who will introduce、uh, who will introduce the uh, uh, Ch Oakland Chinatown Coalition. Uh, Mike, you are muted. Ah, thank you. Welcome, everyone.、Uh, my name is Mike Glock. I go by he and him. I'm with Asian Health Services, and we're one of the steering committee、uh, and co-founding、uh, agencies of the Oakland Chinatown Coalition. The Oakland Chinatown Coalition is made up of 15 different、um, community service providers,、um, concerned citizens,、um, and that includes, you know,、uh, nonprofit service organizations. Faith organizations, volunteer associations, and a lot of great stuff.、Um, we're really happy to make this happen during COVID, and you know we're used to turning people out, like that thing on my background, turning people out to the OACC auditorium, to city council meetings, to BART supervisor meetings, and and Alameda County supervisors meetings. So、uh, on behalf of just you know AHS patients. APEN members, Abalsi residents, APAL youth, Buddhist church、uh, residents—all all of the folks that are in the coalition—we're really happy to be able to um, um, have have our candidates here,、um, so that we can talk about、um, the issues important to our community. Thank you. Yes,、uh, thank you, Mike. And next, I'll have Warren from Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce introduce himself and the chamber. 
Thank you, uh, Warren Chu, on the board of directors for the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce. Uh, lifelong resident, uh, born here in Oakland. Uh, love the city, love our community. Uh, so the, uh, formed in 1985, the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce's objective is to promote business in the Asian community and provide a forum for the discussion of government policy as well as voice concerns over economic and social issues. Uh, today, the, the chamber represents diverse ethnic groups in a range of businesses and professions in both Oakland Chinatown and outside of the Oakland Chinatown area. Thank you, Warren. And next we have um, Jennifer from the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. Hi, hey everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Lee. I go by she, her. I'm the executive director of the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. OCIC is a nonprofit community benefits district in Oakland Chinatown, and we're committed to revitalizing our community by keeping Chinatown safe, clean, and vibrant, and by promoting our uh, local small businesses and nonprofits and building community. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. And so um, we're going to uh, give some time for each of the candidates um, to make an opening statement. Uh, each of the candidates will get two minutes. And then throughout the event, we're also gonna switch up the order so that you'll see different candidates um, start and lead um, each of the sections. So for the opening statements um, to start, we'll have Sirlene Grant, then David Kakashiba, and then Rebecca Kaplan, and then we'll close with Lena Tamp. Uh, please note the timekeeper screen and make sure that you're speaking slowly for interpretation also. Okay, thank you all. And uh, let's just get started. Um, and with Serling Grant, please. Thank you, Timmy. My name is Serling Grant. I go by she, her pronouns. I want to be your next county supervisor because I want to make the county better and more responsive to the Asian population, the diaspora of the Asian population and everyone else who lives in the county. I wanna open the doors for everyone to access county services and make the county a first rate model of inclusion and diversity to reflect the communities that we live in. Literally all of my life from my earliest influences with my parents to this moment have been with the effort and work to create inclusion. I wanna serve in the spirit of our uh, late supervisor uh, Wilma Chan and her legacy that represents all. I think that's one of the reasons so many of us feel her loss is because she was able to connect and serve all of the county um, equally and fairly and sincerely. My major um, themes in my work are to break through the bureaucracy and get access so that people can get to the social services and the county services that they need to bring accountability and responsibility to public safety and law enforcement so that we will be able to go outside of our homes and feel safe and to work on the environment so that our built environment is safe for us as well as our social environment and create social services programs that serve community and our local businesses and small businesses in particular i am a small business owner and I understand what COVID and the last couple of years have done to businesses. Um, so I ask, I ask for this opportunity to get to know you better through this process and to serve you all so that we can all thrive and build a better community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Um, and thank you for the extremely precise uh, timekeeping and time management there. Thank you. It's um, kind of hard with, with that big circle issue. <laughs> sure is. Uh, next up, we'll have um, David Kakashiba. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, meet with everyone. Uh, my name is David Kakashiba. Uh, I'm running for Alameda County uh, Supervisor for District 3. Uh, for the entirety of my adult life, I have been uh, working and serving children, youth, and families. Um, I have been working as the executive director of the East Bay Asian Youth Center uh, since 1980 uh, and have worked to uh, build and grow and sustain an organization that serves uh, not only uh, Asian and Southeast Asian young people and their families, uh, but the entirety of young people who reside in 
Chinatown, East Lake, San Antonio, and the Fruitvale neighborhoods. Uh, we have a long history and have a long, uh, uh, deep relationship with our public school system and with our juvenile and criminal justice uh, systems uh, as well. Uh, I served 12 years on the Oakland Unified School District Board of Education, five of those uh, years as uh, board president. Uh, and I am uh, uh, authored two ballot measures uh, in Oakland. Uh, one is the Kids First Initiative uh, that today generates $20 million a year for children's services throughout the city and the uh, Oakland Unified uh, Measure and Parcel Tax, uh, which is a 10 year, $120 million initiative that invests 90% of all dollars directly into high schools uh, to improve educational outcomes uh, and to uh, uh, break the uh, prison, uh, school to prison pipeline relative to uh, school dropout. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kakasiba. Uh, next, we have um, Rebecca Kaplan. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you this afternoon. My name is Rebecca Kaplan, and I come seeking your vote and your support to serve you as your Alameda County Supervisor for District 3. A little bit about my history. I did my undergraduate work at MIT, where I also got involved in activism and volunteered on this campaign of Senator Kennedy and got more involved in politics. I fought for racial justice and gender justice on my college campus and then went to Stanford for law school and got more involved in serving our community and worked helping tenants who were being mistreated doing housing rights cases. I was elected to the board of AC Transit, our regional bus agency, and served all of Alameda County District 3 and beyond. We launched discount transit passes for seniors and people with disabilities, free passes for school kids, and the free Broadway shuttle connecting our communities. I served on the board of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, bringing zero emission trucks and cutting air pollution in our community. I helped launch the first large COVID vaccination site in America at the Oakland Coliseum with mobile vans to bring vaccines to underserved communities in all languages. On the Oakland City Council, I've had the honor to work with you on pedestrian safety and improved crosswalks, supporting our local businesses with foot patrols and safety ambassadors, bringing language access policies to Oakland business and public services with the government. And I would be very honored to serve as your supervisor to bring healthy food, protect our hospitals and access for all of our community. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Kaplan. Uh, and lastly, we have um, Lena Tam. I am Lena Tam. Uh, thank you for hosting this community forum. As a past president of the Alameda League of Women Voters, it's great to see this partnership to promote the informed and active participation of our community and their government. I have served on the Alameda City Council as the first Asian American woman vice mayor. I'm running for the Alameda County Board of Supervisors with a profound sense of responsibility and determination to improve county services for working families and serve as the bilingual voice for the large and growing Asian American community that makes up over a third of the county's population going beyond District 3 and elevating the legacy of the late Wilma Chan to new heights as we recover from the pandemic. I want to address the issues of housing, community safety and healthcare, especially mental health care access, and bring my lived experience as the daughter of Chinese immigrant parents who relied on county bilingual healthcare as your next supervisor. I live and I grew up in Alameda going through the public schools, graduating from UC Berkeley in environmental engineering. And I work in Oakland Chinatown for the last 30 years. From my college days tutoring immigrant kids on the life skills at Lincoln School 
to forming the Asian Pacific American Democratic Caucus, I've been active in empowering our communities. I have a proven track record of collaboration in giving a voice to our multicultural community as vice mayor of the city of Alameda, president of the Alameda Healthcare District Board of Directors, chair of the Alameda County Planning Commission, and as the water resources manager at East Bay Mud, which is in Oakland Chinatown. I would be honored to earn your vote to advocate for the needs of our community and to continue learning from all of you in expanding core county services. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Tam. Uh, we're going to move into some prepared questions next uh, by the host committee. And first up, we have um, Jennifer Lee from the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Jennifer Lee, um, ED of o uh, OCIC. Um, so we, uh, my question is, we want to be confident in our board of supervisors that they're informed about the communities they're serving. What do you think are the immediate issues that Chinatown is facing? And um, I'll remind the candidates that you'll each have one minute to answer. Uh, this time we'll start with Mr. Kakasiba and then Ms. Kaplan, then Ms. Tam, and then Ms. Grant. So David, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, so, my, so my sense of at least uh, three major concerns uh, in Chinatown are one is uh, the um, unhoused population. Uh, that is in and around the uh, major commercial corridors uh, of Chinatown. Uh, folks that are there both, uh, you know, 24-7, uh, and it's, it's been an issue for both uh, pedestrians and for the small businesses in Chinatown. And the second uh, and somewhat related issue is public safety, uh, the uh, crime and the assaults. Uh, that uh, have taken place and that have uh, actually picked up uh, in uh, recent months uh, is a big issue. And then finally, the, uh, the economic vitality of Chinatown uh, has suffered greatly uh, pre-pandemic uh, with the uh, increase in, in uh, racial scapegoating uh, around the cause of the pandemic uh, and the uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, next, we have uh, Ms. Kaplan. Yes, thank you. Chinatown has faced disproportionate negative impacts to pedestrian safety, with traffic having been directed because of decisions made for decades to route freeways in ways that hurt Chinatown and discriminate against API communities. We have worked together with the Chinatown community to get better crosswalks, and we won tens of millions of dollars from the county for a project that we are pushing for called the Broadway Jackson Interchange to change how the roadways are aligned and improve pedestrian safety for the community. Another major need that many have talked about is for the reliable presence of the community safety ambassadors as we fought for in the budget and for support for the local businesses, making sure they have available parking for customers, that it isn't all taken by commuters, making sure they have financial support and equal access to city services and city contracts. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that response. And then next we have Ms. Tam. I've worked in Oakland Chinatown for the past 30 years and seen many changes. The three major concerns are similar to what we've all talked about, economic recovery, community safety, and addressing the environmental justice issues with uh, traffic. Over the last two years, Chinatown has been hard hit with the anti-Asian rhetoric that we've seen along with the pandemic. As we move out of the pandemic and heal from the anti-Asian hate crimes, we can see hope with the revitalization of Chinatown as we come together, like with the East Bay Toysan Mobile Volunteers, the formation of the Open Chinatown Improvement Council and plans like the Broadway Jackson Interchange of including a bike pedestrian uh, path, along with a vision for a community garden that's being contemplated at Madison Garden, soon to be the Wilma Chan Park. Thank you so much, Ms. Tam. And then lastly, we have Ms. Grant. Uh, 
I'm going to echo the concerns about traffic and pedestrian safety because I have worked in the city of Oakland on some of those very plan those very uh, same planning projects that were mentioned. And so we need to look at items like complete streets that make streets safe for everyone and vision zero to design our streets so that they are safe for people. And so that's one side of the public safety equation. And the other side is the response to the hate crimes and the racial dating and hatred that's been experienced. And that um, falls into uh, the mental health issues and services, I should say. So we need to offer wraparound services and, and support to the community in that regard, which comes to the social services, uh, where I think that we, I have an idea that uh, elders and other people who have a problem with maybe making their ends meet at the end of the end of the month that we do some type of gap financing for them and i'm out of town so i'll stop thank you Ms. grant and then um we have a, a, another question up next um it's going to be uh from enter chu from the oakland chinatown coalition so i'm gonna digitally call you up enter Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am going to put my question in the chat so that folks can read it and that it can be translated at the same time. And I will uh, read it as well. So I'm putting it in the chat uh, now. It is, a, it is a rather long question, I've been told. So um, thank you so much for being here. My name is Enner Chu, and I'm with the East Bay uh, Asian Local Development Corporation, uh, IBALTSI. Uh, we're a community development organization founded in Oakland Chinatown in 1975. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Oakland Chinatown Coalition Steering Committee, uh, as well as the Oakland Chinatown uh, Improvement uh, Council. Um, as you know, Chinatown has often been negatively impacted by many large regional infrastructure projects over the years. But in many cases, those projects have not benefited the community directly with reduced auto traffic, uh, improved pedestrian safety, improved public spaces, and more affordable housing. So one of the duties of each Alameda County supervisor is to sit on the board of the Alameda County uh, Transportation Commission, or ACTC. And um, which uh, really manages all the transportation infrastructure money and all the sales tax dollars uh, coming to the county. Uh, that, that All the sales tax dollars that go to transportation uh, within the county. If elected, what will you do to ensure that Chinatown is prioritized for transportation and infrastructure dollars locally and is competitive for those resources from the larger region and state? Um, for uh, example, at, from ACTC, there's a potential to bring in between 3 million and 10 million annually in capital improvement plan resources in Chinatown. What will you do to support this? Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for that question. And I'll let the candidates know you'll have two minutes to answer this question. Uh, this time we'll start with Ms. Kaplan, then Ms. Tam, then Ms. Grant, and then uh, Mr. Kakasibia. So uh, Ms. Kaplan first. Thank you very much. Yes, I fully commit that as supervisor, I would serve on the Alameda County Transportation Commission. I would attend those meetings and I would actively fight for funding for core needs of Chinatown, which include continued pedestrian safety improvements, additional capital improvements. It also means to fight against bad projects, which I've done at the city of Oakland when Chinatown is mistreated and when it was proposed to be used as just a place to drive traffic through who are going to other places and don't even stop or live or shop in Chinatown, I worked with grassroots community to stop that and redirect the plans. I would also push for funding from MTC, the Bay Area's Metropolitan Transportation Commission, which the supervisors also have seats on. I have served on ACTC before, and I have successfully pushed to prioritize funding for improvements to street safety in Chinatown and to fix the connection between Oakland and Alameda so that traffic is not sent at high speeds through the Chinatown community and is not directed in a way that harms pedestrians. We need to complete these projects 
and County Supervisor District 3 represents both sides, both the Oakland side and the Alameda side. And I would take as someone who has great experience in transportation, that as my responsibility to make sure that that's done and done in coordination with the Chinatown community. I would also fight to have these needs included in development projects. The Lake Merritt BART station area planning is underway too, that's also important. And to make sure that Chinatown's needs are not neglected again as they were when the freeway was built. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. And next, um, we have Ms. Tam. When I was on the Alameda City Council, we were already working on uh, trying to get the funding and the studies allocated for the Broadway Jackson interchange. And uh, after serving on the council as a community member, I've continued to advocate to make sure that there was adequate funding. So this, it doesn't take another 20 or 30 years uh, to get a lot of the pedestrian safety uh, projects uh, funded and, and not have the funds reallocated to other projects at the time that, um, because they, you know, they, they were not budgeted appropriately. So I will continue uh, as a county supervisor to make sure that uh, that is a priority for ACTC, particularly for the Oakland Chinatown area where I've worked and uh, done business and, and been a community member for so many years and so many decades. And to make sure that we don't have uh, projects that, uh, would increase uh, traffic. One of the things that we uh, were able to do at the East Bay Mud Building is to make sure that there were subsidies for transit and a lot of the new buildings that are coming in are having that same um, type of program to reduce the amount of traffic going through Chinatown and also to redress the issues that we've been seeing uh, with, with adequacy of, of parking and pedestrian safety. So we were very uh, fortunate uh, when I was in the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce to work with Asian Health Services and a number of groups to uh, make sure we had like the scramble system and to advocate for funding to make sure there's uh, adequate uh, pedestrian safety. And I will continue doing that uh, in my capacity as the Alameda County Supervisor that would serve on ACTC. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tam. And then uh, next we'll have Ms. Grant answering the question. Yes, thank you. Should I have the opportunity to represent Alameda County Supervisors on the ACTC? It won't be new to me. I served for 10 years on the, on the San Leandro City Council. And in that time, I served as an alternate on ACTC and also on the CMA board, at MTC. Um, I uh, worked on several projects, many transportation and infrastructure projects in the area that impact Chinatown, uh, including the Cypress Freeway, the improvements to the Nimitz uh, in the planning of that, the estuary crossing between Alameda and Oakland. Um, I worked, I was embedded with the city of Oakland's Office of Depart Department of Transportation uh, to about four years ago, I guess now. Um, when we developed the equity model for the Oakland CIP capital improvement projects, uh, which led to several improvements in Chinatown uh, being recognized and some being elevated, such as the Lincoln Center, Lincoln Community Center. And so I would bring that level of experience of looking at the inequities to fix them, to make the programs more equitable and the allotment more equitable. I would look at the factors that as I said earlier, complete streets, other things that make a community more walkable and livable. There should be a tie-in between transportation services and the housing that's there where people can get outside their houses and not feel like they're going to be in jeopardy by some transportation um, moment or mishap. And so those are, the, those are the kinds of experiences I bring along with working with affordable housing. So again, looking at things regionally, working with the county housing and the county transportation, county public works, city of Oakland public works and department of transportation to make it better for Chinatown. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Grant. And uh, lastly, for this question, we have Mr. Takasiba. 
Thank you. Uh, so I am the candidate uh, who has no experience uh, on these regional transportation bodies. Uh, I have worked on transportation and pedestrian safety uh, issues uh, from the outside uh, as a, a community resident, as a nonprofit organization leader uh, in the East Lake and San Antonio areas. And the effort to get simple things like uh, a traffic light or four stops or curb bulb outs uh, is a tremendous effort for what uh, I think your rank and file resident thinks is a simple task. Uh, what you will have uh, and what I can uh, def uh, commit and guarantee that you will have no other, uh, no greater ally who will work intimately uh, with everybody in Chinatown. It is important to have Oakland to speak with one voice vis-a-vis uh, -vis these uh, regional bodies. Uh, they have the entire, the city has to be in support of Chinatown and I will work to make that happen. Alameda also likewise has to be a strong ally for what Chinatown needs relative to uh, transportation. Uh, and the, uh, I, you know, I am an organizer uh, at heart and I will be working with uh, all the, 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 the vast uh, diversity of stakeholders in Chinatown uh, to make that happen. And unfortunately it does take years and I will be, I, I mean, I'm a little older these days so I don't know how long I'm gonna be around but most definitely when I'm here, uh, I will be there. Or Chinatown. Okay, uh, thank you, David, for that for that response. Um, for the next question, I want to invite Warren from the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce. And this is just a reminder: if you haven't already asked a question you'd like asked, um, you can put it into the chat or the Q and A function. Thank you. Uh, addressing the challenges for big and small businesses. What specific short and long-term sustainable initiatives would you propose to advance economic development opportunities in the interests of the Oakland Chinatown Business District? Okay. Thank you, Warren. And for um, this question, you will each get two minutes to answer. And this time we'll start with uh, Ms. Tam. Ms. Tam, you're muted. Apologies. Um, when I was on the Alameda City Council, one of the ways in which we helped uh, small businesses was through com community block uh, development grants. And that is also something that's available through the county and also uh, getting NDA type loans that are available for small businesses. But the revitalization is really critical and having the uh, Open Chinatown Improvement Council, the Community Benefits District, um, secure funding from the county, from the city, from BART, from East Bay Mud, from all the agencies will be important in making sure that uh, not only do we improve the facade, but also create this impression of uh, vitality and safeness so that we can make and have Chinatown become that destination uh, place for businesses because it's really a historic district. When I go out and canvas and talk to the entirety of uh, District 3, um, the Asian community in San Leandro, in Alameda, in Oakland, in San Lorenzo, every part of the district, they, they have a very deep ownership in Oakland Chinatown and I, they want to see Oakland Chinatown be revitalized. And I think uh, with a lot of the programs that have been started right now with uh, OCIC, uh, we're going to move in that direction. And with a lot of the plans that are in play and making sure we have our fair share of funding from the county to have those continue will be very critical in, in moving uh, the district forward because we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, buildings coming up around Oakland Chinatown and there's going to be more uh, customers, more patronization, and that is going to help revitalize our, our area. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Tam. And then uh, our next response will be from Ms. Grant. Thank you. So um, I think one of the main things that we need to make sure we do as a county is highlight and market um, our, our jewels. And Chinatown is a jewel. Chinatown, when pre-COVID, when it was stress driving and really bustling, it was really, it was a jewel. It brought people, people came from all over the East Bay to go into Chinatown. So I think we need to do that. I would also look from a policy point of view, I would look at something I did here in San Leandro. In San Leandro, I founded the African American Business Council, which got established even before Oakland's African American Chamber of Commerce. And as, uh, as imitation is a form of flattery, uh, soon after we started the African American B Business Council, Arlene Lum started the Asian Business Council here in San Leandro. But one of the things we've done through the larger Chamber of Commerce was, was create a local inclusion, local purchasing policy. And that gave um, government, the city, uh, if, if people made bids for goods and services, they, they got preference points, a discount. They got the same amount of money, but their bid came in as a discount. Given the hardship of small businesses right now, it would be really a great thing, I believe, if the county's not doing this, that they should promote small businesses by saying, if you have a small business, we should have a policy that says, we will look at your offerings with a different lens to give you a better chance at serving in the community so that a local business continues to thrive and serve local community. So I would look at something like that, like a local inclusion, local uh, purchasing policy for the county. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Next, we'll have Mr. Kakasiba. Uh, I, I think there are two things that the uh, county uh, should be doing uh, and should be responsible for. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the shelter in place uh, order uh, shut down small businesses uh, from being able to do any kind of business. Uh, and it was a long time uh, for that. And while it's necessary to protect the public's health uh, to have shelter in place. We also have a responsibility to make businesses and employees whole for what we robbed uh, for, in terms of the economic vitality. Uh, and that the, the, uh, the Federal Recovery Act uh, dollars that have come to the, uh, to the county, I think uh, uh, there should be much more of an investment uh, of those dollars to provide uh, grants, not loans, but grants to small businesses uh, to get them uh, uh, back in business and to uh, uplift their customer base. I think the second thing for Chinatown that what the county has a responsibility for is uh, making good on reducing the number of unhoused folks uh, that are living on the streets and living on the streets around Chinatown. Uh, that's an absolute must. We have to do this step by step. Uh, and, the, uh, and we have to be very real about getting real results and real outcomes for that. Uh, it's, it's to the benefit of everybody, to those who are unhoused, that are in need of housing and in need of support services. And it is to the benefit of everybody else living and working uh, in Chinatown. Thank you very much for that response. Uh, last, we'll finish up this question with Ms. Kaplan. Yes, there are multiple ways that we can and must support the business and the community in Chinatown and our broader API community. This includes direct financial support. When Oakland was allocating the federal relief money, I fought for us to give funding directly to our ethnic chambers of commerce, including the Chinatown Chamber which we did. The county has even more money than the city and should be providing direct financial support to our local businesses. And it's more than that. It's also the opportunity to get contracts to participate in large development projects 
For example, we are working to have rules in proposed large developments in Oakland that would allow our local small businesses, including our Chinatown businesses, to have the right to sell and provide services and goods and food in those projects. We also need to look at government projects. We studied in Oakland a disparity study that I fought for that proved that the Oakland administration was giving most city contracts to businesses owned by white men. And we had a big argument at City Hall about a very big city contract that they wanted again to give to a business from Texas owned by white men when there was another bidder that was a local company owned by Asian people in Oakland. And we fought for that local company to get the business and we won. We need to bring that kind of approach to the county. We also need to support language access to county services, to business offices, to permitting and planning and physical improvements to the area, including helping to clean up the trash and of course, to strengthen pedestrian safety as we talked about under the previous item. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Next, I'll invite Eunice Kwan from the Oakland Chinatown Coalition to ask a question. And this is just a reminder too, that if you haven't already put a question into the chat or the Q&A function, you can uh, do so now. Hi, my name is Eunice Kwan. I'm a board member with the Oakland Asian Cultural Center, which is a member of the Oakland Chinatown Coalition. Mental health issues, isolation, and street safety are big issues among Asian Americans and elders in particular in Chinatown. So would you support and champion a funding allocation for a senior escort program in Chinatown in which community ambassadors and outreach workers accompany seniors on errands and walks like the counties of San Francisco and San Mateo have already done? Please share with us your long-term and short-term goals around public safety. And for this question, the candidates will have two minutes to answer and we'll start with Ms. Krant this time. Oh, I get to start. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm making a note on the questions. So um, yes, uh, I like the idea of uh, ambassadors. I have been talking about the idea of navigators to help us navigate the mental health system. You go there now, you go to the, to the website or you, you try, you can go to social services, medical services or behavioral services for entrance into the mental health system of, of uh, the county. So you don't know where to go. So I was saying, well, we need some sort of navigator to help families break through the bureaucracy and get through so somebody that can, can work. So I, I like the idea of extending that to work with elders uh, to, to make them feel safe. Um, I, you know, I've also talked about we have to do a public education campaign about public safety and mental health, like go to a restaurant is there a sign that says that your person you're with how is that person seeming today is that person seeming uh stressed or secure so that could be part of this larger program that i would actually sit down and talk with you all about with the representatives of the different groups to see how we could structure that um, i like that idea um, the long-term and short-term public safety so you know there's a difference between policing and public safety. And so um, I want us to have rapport with officers, the community policing. I want us to have rapport with people who bring services that are public safety services and not necessarily policing services so that um, we can have crime prevention. We know how to set up our, our homes and our businesses. Um, I'm running out of time, but we had a problem here in San Leandro for a while that culturally, because of the Asian custom of leaving things outside, shoes and whatnot outside, homes were being targeted, and we worked to change that. Thank you very much, Ms. Grant. Uh, next response to this question we'll have from uh, Ms. Tan. Did, did you ask? Okay, you did call on me, sorry. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely would support a senior escort program. Um, I think the one that uh, is modeled after San Francisco is something that would work really well in our communities. Uh, the, the county uh, right now has uh, uh, some good programs in place. Uh, 
especially in terms of trying to get uh, federal funding and Medi-Cal coverage for mental health care. We're one of the few counties in the state that actually were able to leverage and amplify the dollars that we receive from the state. But there is a shortage of um, mental health care professionals and especially ones with cultural and language competency. So there's tremendous opportunity for the county uh, to secure funding. There's like $3 billion in the governor's budget and there's another $3 billion under Proposition 63 of which the county would be well positioned to get some of those funds to um, increase our, our mental health care access and needs, uh, whether it's uh, trying to make sure that we have programs in place to get more professionals and higher community-based organizations that can provide the mental health services. Uh, as far as long-term safety, uh, it's gonna have to be a partnership between um, law enforcement and the community because every um, law enforcement agency uh, in the district, in the county are short staff and having the programs in place where we uh, have the kind of escort to, to give that sense of safety to the seniors, whether they shop, whether they go see their, their medical professionals are, are going to be really important in the long run. Uh, we can't saturate a community with cops, obviously, and that is something we need to move forward. Thank you, Ms. Sam. Uh, next response will, come, will be from uh, Mr. Kakashiba. Uh, the, so to the first question around uh, senior escorts, uh, absolutely. That, that is a no-brainer. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a real issue that Alameda County is not uh, funding uh, that type of uh, support uh, for, uh, for seniors and for the elderly, and particularly in, in uh, commercial corridors. Uh, so yes, absolutely, I, I would work on that. Uh, and I believe there's a variety of uh, uh, funding opportunities uh, for that and to scale that. Uh, in terms of the uh, short and long-term public safety, insofar as the county is concerned, the county is responsible for uh, overseeing uh, on community probation thousands of young people and thousands of adults where there is very little supervision, let alone support. Uh, many of these, uh, many of the folks that are on probation don't have a lot of money. Uh, and they are struggling with maintaining stable employment uh, and housing opportunities and a host of, of uh, uh, medical and behavioral health uh, uh, needs. The county must invest in strategies that will reduce recidivism among the uh, uh, folks that are in uh, under court ordered supervision. That has got to be a top priority. It is an absolute failure on the county's part for not doing it. It is failing the people of Alameda County for not focusing on that and doing what it needs to do uh, to get uh, people on a pathway uh, for uh, peace and prosperity. Uh, I believe that I will be focused, if I were to be elected, I am going to be working on that big time. Thank you. And then um, we'll have Ms. Kaplan uh, respond to this question last. Thank you. Uh, yes, I would and will support a senior escort program as well as the safety ambassadors more broadly that community has been asking for. We need all of those efforts to be provided and I would be happy to fight for them. Looking more broadly, ever since Ronald Reagan California took apart its mental health system. And so there are many people who need mental health support who are not getting it. I would work to expand community mental health with clinics and services available in the community so that we reach people earlier and don't wait for a crisis or wait till they end up in jail where it's much worse and much more expensive and more suffering happens. 
also we need to recruit and train more mental health workers, as well as the next generation of workforce of nurses and doctors and other vital frontline workers. I will propose that we use job training money and other grants to help fund for people to get their training, to pay them while they're getting trained and then have them work in the community to expand the number and the cultural competency of our mental health services. We have a similar problem at the city of Oakland level where people would call 911 when someone was having a mental health challenge and they would send an armed police officer who didn't have training in mental health. So we fought for and we won millions of dollars of state grants to launch civilian crisis responders under a program now called MACRO. We need to expand on that type of work and expand on the county's pilot of that and provide that more broadly. We also need to significantly expand affordable housing and job training and job placement programs so we help people rebuild their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kappa. And uh, I wanna invite next uh, Ben Wang from Asian Health Services uh, to come up and ask the next question. Good evening, my name is Ben Wang with Asian Health Services. And my question is, with more than half of our national population reporting symptoms of depression or anxiety, and with the upsurge in violence and discrimination against AAPIs, many leaders have declared the mental health crisis to be a state of emergency. Community-based organizations provide needed mental health care to immigrants and communities of color in Alameda County. Would you support a 15% increase in county funding levels for CBO's contract to provide these mental health services as called for by the Behavioral Health Collaborative of Alameda County? And what are other strategies you would em employ to address mental health needs for crime survivors, as well as mental health needs for those impacted by the criminal justice system? For this question, candidates will receive two minutes to answer the question. We'll start with Ms. Tam and then to Mr. Kakashiba and then Ms. Kaplan and then Ms. Grant. Oh, Ms. Tam, you're, you are muted. I can't tell whether you're controlling my muting or I'm controlling it, but thank you. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, there is tremendous opportunity and I would definitely support the recommendations uh, to increase the allocation by 15% for mental health care access, because this is definitely a priority as we are coming out of the pandemic. Uh, a lot of our young people are facing uh, the issues of isolation and depression, and these require um, early intervention in order to address these issues before it becomes uh, uh, more of a crisis situation, but a lot of the programs that we talked about, whether it's macro, whether it's care, and in terms of responding to mental health crisis without uh, a heavy-handed law enforcement presence, having the right uh, professionals, uh, making sure that they get the treatment that they need will be very critical. Uh, one of the things that uh, you had asked early about uh, mental health care access with respect to facilities and, and um, funding is that the county um, has access to the Proposition 63 funding now, um, but there's going to be additional funding that will come through um, the state's surplus and that will uh, increase the uh, allocation from the county to the cities for mental health care. And, especially when we are looking at um, trying to get facilities so that you're not uh, moving from, uh, you're not automatically going to jail just because you have a mental health crisis, having the, the beds and the facilities, uh, because we know that John George and Fair, Fairmont are, are beyond capacity, that we look at trying to create more beds in uh, things like hospitals that are slated for closure. Thank you, Ms. Tam. Uh, next, we'll have Mr. Kakasiba. Uh, yes, I do support the 15% uh, increase to uh, current contractors, behavioral health contractors. Uh, but that issue really addresses the uh, rising costs of uh, being able to, to pay people and keep people. 
and, and, and build on the quality of those services. I believe there's got to be much more of a massive investment in a broad continuum of support services for the uh, social and emotional health of uh, young people and, and families. Uh, I personally am going to be, if I would, whether I'm elected or not, I will be working on a $100 million a year uh, children's fund, a dedicated children's fund in county government to be able to build that continuum uh, so that it is not solely requiring a medical diagnosis to be able to get any kind of support. The amount of money that the county puts in for prevention and early intervention is small. And in fact, in Oakland, the lion's share of where prevention and early intervention is coming from is actually coming from the city of Oakland. It is not coming from the county government. And that's a real problem. And that is true in the school, in school districts where the medical model is a predominant uh, orientation of how there is something wrong with young people, there's something wrong with families uh, and that we have to uh, 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 treat them as such, that we're going to fix them. That is a real problem. Uh, and that would actually kind of uh, uh, compound uh, the growing uh, kind of crisis that we're having with so many people. Uh, and so, yes, support the 15% increase and move towards a much more massive investment uh, in the uh, broad continuum of behavioral health. Thank you so much. Uh, for our next response, we'll go to Ms. Kaplan. Yes. I am happy to fight not only for the 15% increase, but actually I think we need more. We need to keep up with the growing costs and we need to increase it beyond that to provide more services. I also will propose that we launch a funded training program so that people who are interested in becoming mental health workers can be funded to get the training needed and then they commit to serving our community. We need to recruit culturally competent and language competent mental health workers so that we can provide those services to all of our community. And part of how we can get that is by funding people in the community to get the training to do those jobs. I also think it's really important that we fund more local small scale community mental health. People often get put in these big systems, either a jail or another huge facility where it's hard to get the individual and specific attention. And so providing like the community health clinic model, mental health at the local level in facilities that are throughout the community with staff who speak the language and have the cultural awareness in all of our communities throughout Alameda County. I also think it's important to acknowledge that the county is not in a financial crisis. We have a crisis of depression. We have a crisis of people struggling and not getting help. But the county has the money, has surplus that needs to be allocated. The hospital system is bringing in more state reimbursement. The mental health system can bring in more state reimbursement. And thanks to a law we fought for years ago for sales tax on internet sales, the county sales tax is not down in the pandemic, it's up. The resources are there and I'm prepared for, to fight for them to be used for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Uh, our next answer comes from Ms. Grant. To be brief on the answer about the 15%, yes. Um, but, but as others have said, I think that that's probably just what is due to keep up with the demand and the cost and that we have to do even more to, uh, to fund the need for more individuals. So the 15% will probably just raise the, make us on par with, with the level of the work that's do being done. Um, and so I think that there's so much that goes into making better mental health options for people. And it's not just psychologists and psychiatrists, it's social workers, it's having a, an environment, like an outdoor space environment to go to. Um, it's working with our faith institutions and, and organizations, as well as the local nonprofits, Asian um, health services and other programs that people are aware of. Um, 
And I think, I know, I want Alameda County to be a Hallmark County. And we sit in the middle of one of the most innovative places on earth. And we sit in the middle of one of the most well-resourced places on earth. We have universities and colleges all around us. People have to put in their hours of social work and, and counseling hours. We should be able to have some kind of program in the county to bring those young people and young adults in to help serve our community. We have high tech. There's a member of my family who is a social worker and works with young people and she counsels with them on text. I don't like that. I think we need to reach out and touch people, but um, if you can't reach them one way, reach them another way. And that allows her to reach several of her students. So I think we look at innovation. I think we look at the 15%. I think we look at other organizations that can help us, um, the non-police response, and we bolster our community. Thank you, Ms. Grant. And so next, uh, we're actually going to start inviting our audience um, to um, uh, kind of raise the questions that they had. Um, the first person we have queued up is uh, Elaine Peng, um, if you don't mind unmuting and sharing. And then um, folks are also welcome to ask your question in Cantonese, Mandarin, or Vietnamese, and we'll have um, support in interpreting as well. Do we have Elaine available? Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. 我讲中文,翻译成英文是吗? 可以,可以。因为我写的是中文啊. Elaine用中文稿啊? 我就是想请问一下, 关于无家可归者, 还有这个暴力,那个枪支暴力,他们是怎么样,有什么应对的方式,谢谢。The question um, for you all is, how would you address homelessness and gun violence? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Elaine, um, for this series of questions. You'll have 90 seconds. And um, this time we will start with uh, Mr. Kakasiba and then Ms. Kaplan, then Ms. Grant, and then come back to Ms. Tam. So uh, on, uh, on the homeless uh, and the unhoused folks, I, the, the, uh, the availability, the accessibility of uh, mobile crisis uh, response teams uh, has to be uh, uh, significantly expanded the county has to invest far much more money there, uh, and also to work in coordination uh, with uh, city governments uh, and with, uh, in in this case, uh, in local communities where there is a uh, large presence of uh, unhoused and and, and uh, encampments. Uh, I believe that there, these outreach teams have to, and we have to expand our housing capacity, but we're going to have to step by step, encampment by encampment, spot by spot, is uh, reaching out, engaging folks, uh, getting them supports, and transitioning them uh, to uh, uh, more permanent housing, or whether it's supportive housing or it's uh, basic family housing. Uh, but I believe that the county system is far too Byzantine to have a rapid response. And we need to hold county government accountable for being having the capacity to have rapid response uh, and get uh, real results uh, uh, in this arena. It does require significant uh, cooperation and working together, uh, in this case, with the city of Oakland uh, and with uh, uh, local uh, community organizations. Thank you, Mr. Kakasiba. Uh, next, we'll have Ms. Kaplan. Thank you. We need to do dramatically more to help people get off the streets. And we absolutely need to build more affordable housing for the long term. And we have fought for that, including to use public land for public good 
and prioritize affordable housing construction on public land. And we also need many more options that can be made available immediately. And that's why I've been pushing at the Oakland level to buy existing dorms and hotels and other buildings that are ready to go so we can get people off the streets now and also have support staff on site to help people rebuild their lives. We are now leasing the Lake Merritt Lodge, a dormitory near Lake Merritt that is successfully getting people off the streets, but the county actually controls most of the funding for homeless services. And we need the county to step up and participate in buying and running these dorms and hotels and buying more of them. And we need to use public land to significantly expand our affordable housing supply. We recently got the city council to agree to use some city owned property, including the empty Clay Street garage behind city hall to build affordable housing. And the county also owns a lot of land and controls tax auction houses that the county sells to investors. This should be used for affordable housing. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Uh, next speaker we'll have is Ms. Rant. Yes, so on the issue of homelessness, I see homelessness as like a three level, three prong problem. There's homelessness that's a family and social response to, to respond to. There are people who are separated from their families, maybe because of mental illness, maybe because of fight and they ran away. But we need to put people in contact with their, their families with supportive services to help them reunify. And that I, not everybody's gonna get back together, I understand that, but a lot of people will. Um, people are looking to be brought back together uh, with their family members. So there's a family and social response that could happen with, um, with county services, could happen with social services, it could happen with CBOs. So there are a number of ways we could look at making that happen. Uh, faith-based community. Then there's an economic response. And for that, I've been saying people, I've looked at a model, I'm calling it universal basic income because people are familiar with that, where people are, are homeless because after three months, they couldn't pay the gap of 200 or so dollars between their rent. And so we should give them something to fill that gap as opposed to paying for it on the back end when they're homeless and we have to provide them with meals and shelter and so forth. And then there's the medical response where people are, are, are drug addicts or they need their medicine. And that's more of a county situation that needs to be solved. The county needs to come in and help with that. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Tam next. Uh, Wilma Chan had this vision that, and she, she thought big. It's, it's basically to eradicate poverty. Uh, but short of being able to do that in the near term, uh, I had the opportunity of meeting with a lot of navigation centers like the Lao Family Development uh, Group and the Spanish Speaking Unity Council. And uh, I know when I talked to um, the, her staff, including uh, Supervisor uh, Dave Brown, uh, there's special funding needs that have been allocated uh, from the state to the county that is going to be helping some of the homeless youth, but the, the homeless is, homelessness issue is going to require a continuum of care, starting with a rapid rehousing program, providing temporary housing, but a key part of the program is going to be the wraparound services, uh, making sure that there's no wrong door when somebody comes through a case management that enables them to uh, get access to rental assistance, that gets access to health care, transportation, uh, whether or not it's, um, it's a, a job training and education. Those are things that a lot of these centers, uh, which will require more funding from the state and from um, the county, uh, that will be part of moving, uh, moving that program forward. I can't, I don't have enough time to answer the question about gun control, but we, we can talk about that later. Thank you, Ms. Tam. Uh, so the next audience question, I'm going to call up um, Corinne Jan, please. If you don't mind unmuting yourself, uh, we'll give you the chance to introduce yourself and then also ask your question as well.
Hello. Uh, hi, Erin, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks all the candidates for taking on this huge challenge. Um, I think some of my question has been answered in bits and pieces, as you know, because behavioral health sort of wraps around everything. But I'm curious what are what you see are the strengths and weaknesses or challenges of the county behavioral health system, especially where homeless and minority populations are concerned? And what would be your approach to address those weaknesses or challenges? Thank you, Corinne, for that question. Uh, candidates, you'll have 90 seconds to respond. We'll start with Ms. Kaplan, and then Ms. Grant, and then Ms. Tam, and then end with Mr. Kakashiba. Thank you so much. The county has many dedicated people who are striving to provide behavioral health services. There are good people working in that field, and that is one of the strengths. But one of the biggest weaknesses of the county behavioral health program is that people often get served in the latest and most expensive and most difficult way. So much of mental health ends up happening through the jail after people are already in a crisis and in an environment that does not encourage mental health. And so we need to serve people earlier and better and with care that is culturally competent that is available in their language and that it is in the community. It will ultimately save the county money to support and fund people to get the training to become mental health workers, to fund mental health services in neighborhoods and to help people avoid ending up in jail in the first place. Those things will save lives and save money by providing behavioral health support services in ways that are more cost effective and more effective for human needs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Uh, next up, we will have uh, Ms. Grant answer this question. Yes, um, I haven't done a real SWOT and uh, strengths, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats analysis of the department. So I, I can't really speak to a specific um, thing uh, in the department. But I will say overall, one of the things that motivated me to run for this seat in the first place is the bureaucracy of just trying to get services. Again, I think earlier I spoke to, there are a number of places where you can enter into the county for social services, mental health services, medical services. But if you are just coming to help yourself or help a family member, you don't know where to go. You don't know how to, how to access this. You get caught in the bureaucracy. Um, I, as I said, I had one of the reasons I'm, I'm here is because I've had people reach out to me, both friend and stranger. The stranger saw my face on a website next to a statement about San Leandro Hospital and thought I could help them. So um, people don't know where to go and how to access services. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Uh, next, we'll have Ms. Tam answer this question. Uh, so the county has a really um, a good supportive system when it comes to dedicated and experienced staff um, in providing psychologists, social workers, mental health specialists. And in fact, there's uh, programs like the STARS Community Services that are helping children, adolescents, and transitional youth in San Leandro. And county staff has been very creative in getting federal funding and making sure that there's Medi-Cal coverage for mental health care. Um, the, the issues that are going to be confronting uh, mental health care is going to be things that we are finding out we need more of, like early detection and treatment at the early stages, screening for adverse childhood experiences, so making sure that we have these family resource centers at the schools, mental health counseling, um, making sure we have programs to expand the mental health uh, workforce. And there is funding allocated specifically for that. Training law enforcement on de-escalating encounters with people that have psychiatric crises and making sure that we have a pairing of 
affordable housing shelters and permanent supportive housing for the homeless with um, mental health care um, personnel. And I think those are going to be very critical moving forward. Thank, thank you, Ms. Tam. And then we'll have uh, Mr. Kakasiba answer the question. Uh, so I, I think the overarching issue around the challenges uh, for behavioral health uh, in Alameda County is cold cash. It's about money. It's about resources. It's about the, uh, the resources to uh, dramatically expand uh, capacity for on the, uh, on the crisis end, as well as on the prevention and early intervention end. We do know that for the, uh, the uh, first onset of serious uh, mental disorders pretty much happens uh, by the time you're 25 years old. Uh, and that the investments in the younger population, while I see it all on paper, uh, I don't see the real work happening, certainly not at the scale that needs to happen. And that requires a great deal of partnership with schools where that's the vast majority of young people uh, can be seen. Uh, and that there's gotta be an expanded network of uh, uh, early prevention that uh, services that don't require a medical diagnosis. Uh, the, the fact that we rely so much on Medi-Cal is in, set in itself is a major barrier. Uh, and that it uh, stigmatizes uh, the uh, supports and the services, and it cuts out a whole bunch of people uh, and creates a great deal of bureaucracy. Uh, thank you so much for that answer. Um, we'll go to our next audience question, and I will invite uh, Tu Quach to unmute yourself and ask your question. And uh, please introduce yourself too. Thank you. My name is Tu Quach. I am with Asian Health Services, and I really appreciate all the uh, responses on mental health. My question is really, uh, what are your general health priorities, and how are you thinking about ensuring culturally and linguistically competent healthcare to our diverse, limited English proficient AAPI population? Thank you. Okay, thank you too for that question. And for these answers, we'll go to um, Ms. Grant first and then Ms. Tam and then Mr. Kakasiba, and then we'll end with Ms. Kaplan. Um, general health priorities are um, nutrition and diet, like to be preventive. So to do public education and public awareness, to build on uh, Supervisor Chan's all-in model of having people take care of themselves, be preventive, uh, have family structures and uh, support that kind of um, self-care. Uh, again, I talk about the environment, finding space for us to take care of ourselves. Uh, I talked about a public education campaign where we have, you know, you're with someone and you're saying, how is that person seeming to you today? Uh, you know, call 211, 911, not 911, but call some number to, to get uh, support and services. So the general proactive approach, the, the cultural competency, we have to make sure that people will never have, I mean, the Asian population is about the high 20s, 30% of the county. We have a long way to go to have the service providers match the population, but we can train no, people listen to, I just asked. how to be responsive. We can train people how to be culturally sensitive and aware. And so we'll have to do some training uh, to make sure that we're doing that. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Grant. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Tam next. So half of the county's $3.6 billion budget is goes to health and human services. And the, um, the, the services that are best provided that uh, helps uh, address the issues of uh, cultural competency and language is really at uh, the clinic level, like Asian Health Services, um, the, uh, La Clinica de la Raza, and the one thing that I, I think it's important to um, point out um, is that even within the Asian American community, we're not a monolith. There's different needs. 
you know, the Vietnamese community have uh, a, a certain set of needs that are so much different uh, um, because uh, they're, they're often more rent burden. Uh, they have more housing insecurity. Uh, Pacific Islanders are disproportionately represented in our unhoused community. And then working in Oakland Chinatown, I, I know that there's uh, major income disparities between um, the Chinese community. So having uh, to address all of those, it has to be tailored specifically uh, for the communities that are being affected. And I like uh, the approach that uh, Supervisor Chan had with the cradle to golden years approach with all in. And that's something I will definitely want to pursue and continue. Thank you, Ms. Tam. Uh, next, we'll have um, Mr. Kakasiba. Uh, <clears throat> so language access, uh, culturally, uh, being culturally responsive, uh, the, in terms of healthcare services, uh, the, the constant challenge, in my opinion, is uh, thinking that Asian Health Services will handle that, uh, that in, in terms of a government uh, policy-making mentality. Uh, uh, anybody who uh, speaks Spanish, okay, that's La Clinica's job. They handle that. I think as a, on the county level and the Board of Supervisors level is providing oversight over the county's healthcare system, that uh, language access uh, and cultural appropriateness, culturally responsive uh, care uh, ha has to rise to a higher uh, level, a higher standard of quality uh, in all of our hospitals, in all of our community clinics uh, and wellness centers that the county is administering and funding. Uh, and so that we uh, ensure that the, to, to Serlene's point, the uh, uh, rarely is the, um, the workforce matches what the community need is, uh, but I think we have to uh, elevate that and it's critical. It's actually a matter of life and death. Uh, if we're not able to provide that kind of uh, care and that type of relationship, uh, people suffer. And so we have to up our, our standard of quality. Thank you so much for that answer. And then uh, we'll have um, Ms. Kaplan answer next. Thank you. Protecting and strengthening our hospitals and healthcare system is essential to all of our future. And we have a growing senior population, a growing disabled population, and a population that speaks many different languages. And we need to significantly expand the resources we are putting into recruiting and training the next generation of healthcare workers and to make sure that we are keeping all of our hospitals open and in fact expanding the services that they have and that the wellness centers have. Um, we need to reduce the barriers for immigrant and refugee nurses to be able to work and function. We need to have training for people who are already culturally competent and language competent to get trained to be healthcare workers. We need to include in this, by the way, the in-home support service workers. More and more people are needing care in their homes, and that needs to be part of the picture that we are strengthening and training and well-funding people for. Part of why I am excited to run for the County Board of Supervisors is because the county, not the cities, controls the hospitals and public health. And I would seek to open community vaccination sites to give people not only their COVID boosters, but their flu shots and everything else they need in every community throughout the county and provide more preventative care to help keep people healthy. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Ms. Kaplan, for your response. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say that this is, we are running up on our time and uh, that's all the time that we have for questions. I uh, wanted to thank the audience for submitting your questions. Um, the host committee has collected them all and we'll be sharing them with the candidates after this forum. And we would encourage the candidates to, um, to respond uh, to these questions publicly through your various uh, platforms and we'll be grouping those.
Okay. And so for the candidates, um, I want to invite you to make your uh, closing remarks. Um, uh, you'll get one minute each. And uh, also, if you may also close by um, sharing with the audience how they might be able to learn more about your campaigns or follow up with you directly. Okay. And so um, for this round, we're going to start with uh, Ms. Tam and then Mr. Kakashiba, then Ms. Kaplan, and then we'll close um, the forum today with Ms. Grant. Thank you for having us and for your very insightful questions. Uh, as the daughter of Chinese immigrant parents and the caretaker of aging parents, I know the importance of having a voice in county government, particularly with language access and healthcare. I want to work with you to be your voice on the county board of supervisors. I've worked in Oakland Chinatown for the past 30 years at the East Bay Mud Building as an environmental engineer. I've been on the board of the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce and formed the Asian Pacific Employees Association at East Bay Mud, advocating for projects like pedestrian safety, housing, and condemning AAPI hate crimes. As we move out of the pandemic and heal from the anti-Asian hate, we need to work together with each other to access the safety net services that the county provides. I'm honored to have the support of community leaders like State Controller Betty Yee, Fiona Ma, Supervisor Dave Brown, former Supervisor Alice Lai Bicker, County Assessor Fong La, Alameda Mayor Ashcraft, and over 50 leaders. I would be very honored to earn your vote on June 7th. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kakasiba. <laughs> Uh, David, you're muted. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, to have this uh, conversation. Uh, uh, deeply appreciate it. Uh, I too am a son of uh, immigrants, uh, and uh, and I'm from a family of uh, brown collar uh, workers. Uh, I've been uh, my my parents are gardeners. My brother's a gardener. Uh, I've done many years of uh, working. Uh, people for homes uh, who have a lot of money to dispose uh, because they can't mow their own lawns. Uh, I have dedicated my entire adult life working with young people, uh, 42 years at the East Bay Asian Youth Center. I am bringing the voices uh, of, of folks, of uh, working families, young people to the Board of Supervisors. If you want to know more, you want to criticize me, give me a call or text me at 510-435-8582. I would love the dialogue. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, David. And then uh, we'll go to Ms. Kaplan next. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I would be incredibly honored to have your vote. You can learn more on our website at supervisorkaplan.org. I would be honored to have the opportunity to bring countywide resources and the money and power that the county does have to crack down on illegal gun dealers, many of whom are crossing city lines. In Oakland, we invested in the gun tracing equipment, but we need countywide resources to track down and shut down those illegal gun dealers who are flooding death into our community. I would work with you to build a new crime lab that could be used by jurisdictions throughout the region to solve crime, to bring healthy food to every community, to expand on the programs we launched in Oakland with the soda tax and the program supervisor Wilma Chan launched with All In Eats to provide healthy food in every neighborhood as well as child care. I would be very honored to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And then we will close with Ms. Grant. Yes, thank you for this opportunity this evening to uh, share some of my values and some of my vision for this position. I would be honored to serve as a representative of all of you who are on this line. Um, I think that we get caught up into the identity of uh, identity politics more often than we need to. Uh, the struggles of African Americans and Asians and immigrants have many parallels. We have struggled and sacrifices of our family we have the need for economic and housing security. We are uh, brought up to serve uh, and respect our elders. And so I think that uh, we have a joined history of all of us actually, of just surviving and pulling communities together. And so my goal is to honor all of our respective cultures and to make this county stronger. 
and better for all of us by opening doors and connecting us. Our struggles and goals are not separate. We all want healthy communities, safe places, successful businesses, and economic security. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grant. And um, thank you all the candidates for spending your early evening with us and taking the time um, to, to share your, your campaigns with us, but also um, really meet some of like the key sort of movers and shakers and, and folks working really hard to improve the Chinatown community. So thank you for spending that time with us. As we mentioned in the beginning, uh, this has been recorded and we will be sharing this out with everyone afterwards um, with uh, streams in Cantonese, Mandarin and Vietnamese right and um, really the goal here was that so that like our community could get to know you a little bit better and also for you to get to know our community uh, better too and um, this is totally unscripted but I would like to ask the organizers to go off mute or go off their camera so that we can see um, who it is who, who put all the hard work in organizing this event and these are uh, folks from the China, Oakland Chinatown Coalition, uh, Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, and the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. And obviously, since they are running tech, they are declining to go on camera, and which I will totally accept. And I think that's totally fine. But I just want to just just give credit where credit is due. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Alvina, do you want to ask folks to um, the organizing committee to stay? Yes, organizing committee and a couple tech support folks, if you can stay on and also <laughs> help us uh, close out the room for everyone else. That's yeah, right. um, turning off the recording now Stop everybody else turn off the recording <laughs>